Hi, in this lecture, we're going to talk about the continuity equation, which is very similar to the conservation law of mass, but for the fluids. It basically tells us that amount of the fluid, which is passing through different tubes with the different radiuses are the same. So for example, uh, so the amount of the blood, which is passing through the aorta with the high, with the big radius, is the same as the amount of the blood, which is passing through the smaller blood vessel, for example, arterias, per one second. So let's try to write down the equations, the continued equations. And before we do this, we first of all need to introduce a couple of concepts. The first concept is going to be the velocity of the fluid, or for example, the velocity of the water. And when we define this, we are going to look a little bit more deeper into the water. We say that, hey, the velocity of the water, it is the amount of the, so the distance which is passed through by the particles of the water per unit of time. So classically, we define this as the S over T, where the S is going to be the distance which is passed through the particles of the water, for example, divided to the time. But for us, it's more important question is how much fluid is passing through some some liquid uh, some tube or some pipe so let's say i've got a pipe i would like to know hey how much water the amount of the water which is passing through this piece of pipe per two minutes and and obviously for me it, it should depend on the velocity of the fluid for example the velocity of the water so if the water is coming with the higher velocity then obviously much more water is going to be passing through per two minute then whenever the velocity of the water is smaller. And another thing is which, 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 which affects to the amount of the water which is going to be passing through this part of the pipe is going to be the cross section area. So I will just cross the pipe at the, at the part and I will find the area of the cross section. So this, if this area is bigger again, then the uh, amount of the water which is going to be passing through this pipe is going to be higher. If this area is smaller, then the amount of the water which is passing through this part is going to be smaller again. So we are going to define something which is called the volumetric flow rate. It basically um, amount of the water which is passing through the cross-section area per unit of time. So we just say that this, this amount is proportional to the velocity of the fluid into the cross-sectional area. So basically we're going to define this as the uh, cross-sectional area multiplied to the velocity. So this is one of the really important equations because it, it, it connects between each other the, all of these important concepts like the cross-sectional area, the velocity, and the volumetric flow rate. It basically tells you that, hey, if you increase the velocity, then the volumetric flow rate is also increased. If you increase, for example, the, uh, the cross-sectional area, then the volumetric flow rate is also increased. Uh, at the same time, it connects the, the cross-sectional area with the velocity. It tells you, hey, if you increase, sorry, if you increase the velocity, then the volumetric cross-section is going to be decreased, which is which is natural, right? So it basically tells you that, hey, if you just, like, if the, it's a, this, the same stream of the water is passing through a smaller cross-sectional area, then the velocity is going to be higher. So it will passing through the smaller cross-sectional area was the higher velocity. So the cross-sectional area is inversely proportional to the velocity. So the continuity equation is the mathematical expression um, of the principle of the conservation of law of mass. It basically enables us to find the velocity um, of the liquid at the end of the syringe. If we know the velocity of the liquid in the beginning of the syringe, and we know the cross-section area there. So it, 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 it enables us to find the velocity at the different part of the tube with a different radius. So let's define this equation. In order to do this, we say, let's say we've got the bottle with a different, um, different cross-section areas and the different parts. So the cross-section area in the beginning is higher than the cross-section area at the end. 
So volumetric flow rate, which is the amount of the water or the liquid uh, fluid, which is passing through uh, the, the, the beginning of the bottle, the beginning of the, um, uh, this plastic is, is going to be the same as the amount of the water per time, per unit of time at the end of the bottle. Okay, so what I would like to do is I would like to say, hey, the velocity in the beginning is going to be V1, but, but if the cross-section area at the end is going to be smaller, then the velocity is going to be higher so that the, um, the volumetric flow rate in the beginning and at the end are going to be the same. So the continued equation basically tells you that, hey, the volumetric flow rate in the beginning, which is the cross-section area multiplied by the velocity in the beginning, is going to be the same as the volumetric flow rate at the end of the bottle when we multiply the cross-sectional area at the end of the bottle to the velocity uh, of the fluid when it leaves the bottle there. So, uh, okay, so we are going to try to make a simulation in order to understand this concept more deeper. So this is the P hat simulation here. So I've, I've got a tube with a constant radius here. So we can measure the speed of the water, for example, here. So it's going to be 1.6 meters per second. So our law tells us that if I increase the cross-section area here, then the velocity is going to be smaller here, right? So if I measure the velocity, it's going to be smaller than in the beginning. And at the same time, if I decrease the cross-section area, so if I make it smaller, then the velocity here is going to be much more higher than in the beginning. So basically the velocity is um, inversely proportional to the um, cross-sectional area. While the uh, flow rate, the volumetric flow rate is always a constant. So in this case, it's 5,000 liters per second. So in this lecture, we're going to do a couple of examples as well. So let's, let's solve some problems. Water flowing through a garden hose of a diameter 2.74 centimeters fills a 25 liter bucket in one and a half minutes. So what is the volumetric flow rate of the water? So if you remember, so the volumetric flow rate, so which is denoted as the IV, has the units, like uh, it's, it's a velocity multiplied to the cross-sectional area. So the units of the velocity is meters per second, and the area of the cross-section is meters in the square, right? So meters in the square. So this is meters cubed per second. So the volumetric flow rate, it's amount of the water in cubic meters per second, right? Or per unit of time. Okay, so it tells us that, so it is going to be filled, 25 liters is going to be filled in one and a half minutes. So I'm, I'm going to just put this here. So it's going to be 20, so we need to also know that one liters of water is equal to the 10 in the power of minus three meters cubed. So then 25 liters is going to be equal to the 25 multiplied as the 10 in the power of minus three meters cubed divided to the uh, one and a half minutes, it's 90 seconds, 90 seconds. If you calculate this, it's going to be 2.78 multiplied to the 10 in the power of minus four. So this is second. Multiplied to the meters cubed per second. So the volumetric flow rate here is equal to the 2.78 multiplied as a 10 in the power of minus four. So let's solve another problem. What is the speed of the water living at the end of the hose? So let's say I've got a simple hose in the garden. with the radius, right? So we know the amount of the water which is passing through this cross-sectional area every second, right? So this is equal to the 2.78 uh, times 10 in the power of minus four meter cubed per second. So what I would like to do is I would like to know its velocity. So again, we're going to use the same equation. IV is equal to A multiplied to Z V. So we've just calculated the IV. So we can find a cross-sectional area, right? And then we can find the velocity. So let's find the cross-sectional area. So if you look to here, so the, to this part, so let's zoom this out. 
So this is going to be a square. So it is already given that the diameter of the square is equal to the 2.74 centimeters. Then the radius of the square, so the radius is going to be equal to the half of the diameter, right? So diameter over two, it's going to be equal to the 1.37 centimeters, which is equal to the 1.37 times 10 to the power of minus two meters, right? Since one centimeter, uh, one meter is 100 centimeters, so that is why one centimeter is 10 to the power of minus two meters. Then um, the, cross, uh, the, the area of a circle is given by the formula pi multiplied to the radius in the square, right? So the pi is 3.14, radius is 1.37 times 10 to the power of minus 2 meters in the square. So this is going to be equal to 3.14 times 1.37 in the square times 10 to the power of minus 4 meters in the square. So if you calculate this, this is going to be equal to the 5.9 times 10 to the power of minus 4 meters in the square. Then just using this equation, we can find the velocity. Velocity is going to be equal to, sorry, so the velocity is going to be equal to IV over A, right? IV was 2.78 times 10 in the power of minus 4 meter cube per second divided to the 5.9 times 10 in the power of minus 4 meters in the square. So the meters in the square is going to be canceled with this. We can just calculate this using the calculator. It's going to be equal to 0 0.47 and 1 meters per second. So this is going to be the velocity of the water, which is going to go out from this simple garden hose. So let's solve another problem. So the second problem, what is the average flow speed of blood? And aorta, if its diameter is equal to the 2.4 centimeters and volumetric flow rate is equal to the uh, 0 0.1 liters per second. So the, uh, the amount of the blood which is passing through the aorta is equal to the 0 0.1 liters per second. And we know that the diameter of the aorta is equal to the 2.4 centimeters. I would like to know the velocity of the blood which is passing through the aorta. So again, we are going to use the same equation. So the IV is equal to the A multiplied to the V, right? So again, so A is going to be the area of, of the cross section. So if you've got the outer, so what I'm asking you, just cut this at some point here. And if you cut this, you're going to get the cross section area, which is going to be, so the circle. And the area of a circle is, can be found as the pi multiplied to the R in the square. So since the diameter is equal to the 2.4 centimeters, then the radius is going to be equal to the 1.2 centimeters. It's going to be 3.14 times 1.2 centimeters, 10 in the power of minus two meters in the square, right? Good. So this is going to be equal to, So if you calculate everything, it's going to be four point, oh, let me write this, 3.14, 3.14 times 1.44, 10 in the power of minus four meters in the square. It's going to be 4.52 times 10 in the power of minus four meter in the square. So this is the cross section area. So the velocity, so in order to find the velocity, what we have to do is we need to define the IV to the A. So the volumetric flow rate to the cross section area, it's going to be 0 0.1 liters per second. It's 10 to the power of minus three meters cube per second, divided to the 4.52 times 10 to the power of minus four meters square. Right. It's going to be equal to roughly to the 0 0.22 meters per second. So this is going to be the velocity of the blood which is passing through the, the aorta. So just using this continued equation and the concept which co connects uh, the velocity with the cross section area, we can, uh, we can write down this kind of table. So this table uh, shows us basically the speed of the blood, 
depending on the type of the blood vessels. For example, in the aorta, we've just solved this. So in aorta, was the diameter 2.4 centimeters. So the volumetric flow rate, if you, if you remember, so, uh, so the cross-sectional area, sorry. So the cross-sectional area, we found it was 4.5, 10 in the power of minus four meters in the square, which is the same as 4.5 centimeters in the square, right? So 4.5 centimeters in the square. And we've just found the velocity of the blood there is gonna be 23. For example, in the arterias, well, the diameter of the arterias are going to be 0 0.4, um, uh, centimeters um, that the the cross-section area is going to be equal to the 20 velocity is equal to the 5 do you see so the multiplication is always equal to the 100 uh, right so which is equal to the 0 0.1 liters per second then we can get the uh, the this table which is basically is going to tell us connects us the velocity of the blood depending on the different types of the blood vessels